Hello everybody. Hello. Uh, my name is Tom and welcome to Fun Zero. My name is Danny Golub. Um, I'm working for SUSE, like Tom. I forgot to mention it, it's quite nervous. Yeah, sure. And so before we start, we have a quick demo. Hopefully it works. Um, to give you a brief introduction about the method of this is my machine, the right one. So, um, and then the uh, uh, people of Richard, which is a project from our community. It's a very Richard. Which is a fully productive application. Um, we hack this people to give it some network capabilities. And I, his buddy Richard, and I see Daniel's people session. We try to connect. Okay. So he's also connected, and I. Yeah. Throw him the people. Yeah. Yeah. To yeah. to throw. So it's really tricky. <laughs> so and then I call it, can throw it back and yeah, the SCC yeah. it's very very productive for yeah. office and <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the fun part of the talk. Now it gets serious. <laughs> so everybody knows now what zero comp is, right? <laughs> <laughs> First, we give you a short overview about ZeroConf. What is ZeroConf? Yeah, it's only a brief yeah. introduction. We, we don't Just go in deep, touch the surface. Okay. You might ask Lena. I, I will ask every question in Lena if we get to the yeah. so, And then I, yeah, maybe more on Lena's part, I will um, introduce some ZeroConf implementations. Um, the big question what do you have to do to write ZeroConf applications? It's not done with zero code, and then we give some more demonstration. Not like not only the people there, there's more, but also fun stuff. Yeah. And a demo would be <laughs> the biggest part of our talk. So uh, just start with a short introduction. Um, zero count for support zero configuration. Zero configuration networking is a bundle of network techniques to um, make it easy to write network applications and just don't care about something like an IP addresses, subnet mask, or so on. And as you saw in the nice application before, this, uh, it opens new possibilities for developers. So the main idea is to think more network give your application network rings and it's probably fits best for a talk networks like so this one small lens we have like here yeah, or we we have meetings or so we've just um, done switch here connected with these two laptops and the macbook and it has no routing or any pressure functionality so, so uh, this makes uh, Casual sys admins really off the read, so there's no need that an admin with deeper knowledge of networking techniques comes to your machine and sets up your interface. Like IP physics or not? Yeah. Um, mm. Like IP version 6? Yeah, yeah, sure. Who knows such an address? We will come to that more later. Um, zero count covers three parts. It's also about the three layer foundation of ZeroConf. Um, so it solves these three problems for you and it looks like magic. This is addressing, naming for your hostname and discovery. Yeah, the addressing, like you might uh, ask for, for IP first. There's some automatic magic to assign IP address for IP version 6. Um, for IP version 4, there's some further magic, we call it 
of each of all the authority thing. You know? And there is no DHCP server required for this, as you might saw here. The, we just connected the machines to that switch and they are assigned to their own IP addresses. And this is quite nice for home networks. Okay, nowadays everyone has some Wi-Fi router or something like that, which in DHCP is already built in, but in this case, like in on a conference or something like that, where you don't have the central infrastructure in place, it's quite handy to have. Um, the naming is done with a technique called multicast DNS. It's an invention of Apple. Um, the main goal is that no DNS server is required, no central DNS server. It works mostly exactly as plain DNS, except that your naming requests are not sent to a central DNS server. They are sent to a multicast address. And uh, yeah, here you see the addresses. And the responding of these requests is done by a so-called MDNS responder, which works in background and listens to port 53, 53. So uh, when there is a DNS server in the network, it can coexist both of the reports. So um, the most important part for for the application developer to you is very likely it's the discovery part of the serial company stuff. Because um, you are able to discover services in your local link network um, without a central instance in your network like an SLP server. How many of you run an SLP server at home? Okay. <laughs> you have a problem. <laughs> yeah. You don't have? Okay. Yeah, then. Yeah, expect Cypher, nobody runs one. So you can uh, discover services in your a local link with um, DNS based service discovery. It's like the name already tells, it's based on plain DNS. So, and it also contains um, human readable uh, information. So, what you see in the B wall widget is some, okay, it's not that user friendly maybe, but. Yeah, you, um, you can have uh, uh, tag your service with, uh, with a service name and a service type to search only for a particular service, like in this case for what you call people, or I guess you announced it on as people. Yeah, or as people like. underscore people dot underscore TCP. And yeah, and so this widget shows only this uh, all, all instances on this local link which running or which offer the service, and you can also have some optional configuration parameters. This is, for example, on a client has the location information on which floor or something like that. So you can um, write a, a, a graphical rich application <coughs> without bothering the user to know about IP addresses or the port or something like that. So it just really opens you, you as developer new uh, possibilities to write application like we did with people. So, um, for you as developer, the third layer, the discovery layer, is the most important one because this is the layer you use in your applications for publishing services, for browse for services. The other two layers are done by ZeroCon if you don't have to care. But we we'll show you in the later slide how you publish and browse. Yeah, let's come to some major ZeroCon implementations. <coughs> As I already mentioned, um, Apple did uh, the major inventions in the ZeroConf stuff. Um, they ship a package called Bonjour, or formerly called Rendezvous. Um, Bonjour is also available for Windows and also for other POSIX like operation systems. And in the Linux environment, there is Awahi. And which the author is Leonard. Leonard. Yeah, maybe. Do you, do you want to introduce Avani? Or should you? That's a main introduction. Oh, okay. Who knows Avani? 
Oh, great. I think it does need to work on that. So there's a more detailed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our uh, office in uh, full synchronous uh, zero implementation. Like we um, intentioned before, just three layers that IP uh, for for our um, implementation with Avaya Auto IPD, which is, uh, is running when, for example, the DHCP client um, doesn't get an IP address assigned. So and also our MDNS and DNS history. Um, Avaya provides a DBIS interface um, to. Um, announce services or to browse for services, and it also uh, provides if you're not that familiar with Stevis, uh, then you can also use a, a, a Lipa Avai client which wraps the Stevis interface, and here you have callbacks, callback function, so it's uh, asynchronous. And, and it's, it's really nice time, so good job. And it also offers lots of bindings like from Monon, Python, and I guess many more, and also lots of helpers for, for example, for the kit, uh, main loop integration, and what else? Or is anything that's the. Someone actually, has yeah. had common lots of support, crazy stuff. So, yeah, 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 yeah it's just, it's it really nice uh, to implement. It offers everything you need, so it's neat and perfect. Yeah. So the great question: What do you have to do to uh, imp to write zeroconf applications to use zeroconf capabilities? Yeah, um, I waste my time with give you an introduction in how to implement this with Avahi. There is an in the source code of Avahi a uh, very very good uh, detailed demonstration how to. Yeah, um, browse and for services or public services. This was also the way I started to get familiar with Avan. It was very uh, easy. And yeah, and the, uh, on this wiki page you get also the description for the DBus interface. But I guess you have also DBus introspection, right? We do have a, the DBus stuff is not really documented, but the Avani client is documented and mostly just reflects what DBus does. Yeah. So if you need some documentation for DBus, just go to the documentation for the C API and you should be able to. Find out what, what is. Yeah, so that's the best point to start with Avari. So, so, if you're a KDE developer, there's a great package called KDE and SSD. Uh, with KDE and SSD as a name, let's expect you can do everything what the third layer uh, should do. You can publish services, you can browse for services. And here's a Short code snippet. Uh, we will show you later that this code really works. Should. And first of all, you have to allocate a public service <coughs> object and you do this while passing a service name, a unique service name. And the second parameter is the, it's the most important parameter, it's the service type. So um, when you want to browse for the service, you have to use exactly this service type. And of course, a port where your service runs on. Afterwards, you start the service while calling the method publish. So what you have to do to browse for this service, um, it's nearly also very easy. You have to allocate a browser object and the only thing you have to give this browser object is a, a service type we want to browse. And if you're familiar with uh, Qt's uh, signal and slot technique, it would be really easy for you to connect to the signal service edit, where you get the remote service pointer. And you can resolve this pointer and can do everything. You can ask for yeah, the port number, the service running, the host name, the service name, and something else. And last you have to start your browse and yeah, you get a lot of signals. Hopefully. Hopefully yeah. So that's basically all for the theoretical part. We try to show you something. First of all, our self-made um, people. With a small example, 
Service and Daniel also started his, his client and yeah, as you can see he has registered a new client with his machine name, his port number, where his um, service runs on. Okay, and when I and stop the service, did you? No, I didn't connect oh, it to oh, the oh, oh. remove, but start again. You you will see that. Yeah. yeah. So um, what you also can see, we have different ports, so you can also um, <coughs> announce different port numbers with, this, uh, with DNS, uh, DNSSD, and, or, and this is this human readable uh, string yeah. which you can deliver. So this is actually uh, what you show in your UI or in your browsing widget. So, it's so really for future networking applications, it's really not needed to know the IP address of uh, the service where I want to connect, it's, it just uh, gives zero count capability <coughs> and you can browse for the service. What's next? So, next we show you some instant message messaging mm. features. Speaking always on a local network. Yeah, yeah. So this is only, only local. On the local. So, here's a short list. What applications currently in OpenSUSE? There are many more uh, support. The most so important one is down here. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, EM, you can show you some messaging stuff. Yeah, yeah. and it just there's items to the list on the Yahoo website. It's, just, it's a wiki. You should be adding like default. Yeah, it, it's, it's yeah. only a one week old code, so we will add it. But Synergy, I didn't know that Synergy was. Yeah, I, I, I did this as my did final exam project. I didn't know that you wrote Mangolasi at this time. Yeah, I wrote that. Uh, maybe we need to talk about that. Yeah. So, um, if you walk here to the screen, um, Tom started uh, Concra, which uh, is able to do a uh, bonjour chat, or, uh, which is based on, uh, which is using uh, uh, the local link uh, to announce. Um, is uh, to this uh, to this network. Computer for Kali. Yeah, there's a formal plugin for Computer. It's it's not in the situation to call it stable, but it works. Yeah. So you can also use it with iChat and Mac OS X. Oh yeah. Uh, Maybe you want to show it that. Or it's suspended. 
Yeah, um, Tux Kröte is the name of the MacBook. So, actually, it can. Um, one of our Hack Week winning applications is Giver. It's a GTK application for file sharing. You can easily drop files in a body list and your peer, which also uh, has announced the Giver service, yeah, can get these files. And I took this great capability and wrote an application called KPAS, or formerly KIFR, but uh, there are some reasons to rename that. So, um, <coughs> we just show you that. It is available as Plasmoid for KDE4 or as Traeken. Yeah, Daniel has started this. Yeah, so just like Traeken in KDE3 is KIFR straight. Yeah. So, and just in case, we can send him, so we can see our buddies. This is Daniel, this is myself. So we can send him a file or a clipboard entry. This is the extension, which is not yet in the giver available, but we really cool. So we just send him a file. Maybe to force him from the presentation. presentation. And hopefully it works and you get the uh, Oh yeah, there's something in my hand that I have to that's I don't know. Ah. Ah. Just takes a while, seriously. Um sorry, here's the part. So yeah. Is that some home particle or something? Um standardized. And it's just uh, it's uh, HTTP. It's some kind of HTTP yeah. HTTP pop. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's just a plain uh, very very simple HTTP put implementation. <coughs> because, yeah. It's not standardized so protocol. So if it's it's fine. It's yeah. the right so I'm to send can you uh, the clipboard entry? Oh, yeah. yeah, I just tried to send Daniel uh, clipboard entry. And then uh, you send me this, uh, this pass as clipboard, and if, it, if I accept, I can now uh, select this pass. No, and it's you're running KD3, so. Oh, you're using because, it. Yeah, oh. because it's activated via Dbus. Uh, it's a clipper function of KD4. Yeah, just so do it again. Mm. So I send him just a note of yeah, the message. Start. We can't start. Uh, okay. Yeah, we just skip around anywhere. So what you also can do with KPAS, you can start a public file server. This is also announced. We are zero run. So you can see in the buddy list that I have running a public file server. I will publish my home directory. Yeah, that's enough. Okay, I've successfully published. And I found now in Conqueror and KG3 in the ZeroConf KIR, um, that is, uh, yeah, it's home directory. Yeah, the public files are But this takes a while. Maybe it should take a small directory. Yeah. Is that ah, FTP yeah, or web or whatever? It's web app, yeah. Um, okay. So, what else? Okay. Enough for... It also works with... Yeah, it's pretty clear. 
Um, maybe we show some synergy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, as my uh, final exam project for my traineeship, I wrote an uh, I enhanced synergy um, for uh, with the zero conf capability. Uh, I don't know how many of you know synergy. Okay, uh, for those who don't know, it's an application to share input. So um, your mouse, if you look at the, the border of your screen with your mouse, then it redirects the input even of your keyboard to this machine. For example, if I wouldn't move now, it's just a. It's just a yeah. uh, what I show now is um, to control my laptop and if I go home I can um, just connect it to my home network and control my other PC on my desk at home. So it's it, this is the basic of the multi-homing and, the, and this, is, uh, this makes uh, heavily use of DNS-based service discovery just browse, found the uh, machines in your network and decide if it's now the client or the server for Synergy. And, um, uh, the Synergy implementation is uh, written for um, Bourjou, uh, so it runs on Mac OS X, so, and for Avahi, so it's depending on uh, build time, which implementation is used. If Avahi is available, it builds Avahi. Uh, if Bourjou is available, it builds uh, Synergy support for Synergy with uh, Bourjou. Yeah. Um, so this makes it even usable for uh, um, yeah, for uh, control uh, using this Synergy with Zero Car for Mac OS X and on Linux. So, yeah, actually, the demo, demo doesn't work, but we run out of time. Maybe, do you have some questions? No? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, some questions. Yeah. Don't be shy. Try to answer. No questions? So then, thanks for coming. Yeah. Device-specific capabilities. <coughs> so we have for each device one capability, or we discover them on the fly, on the first thing. So um, I don't know if this is answered. Yeah, we can uh, later. Again, uh, we, we have frontend as well. Uh, you need at least a frontend to use the framework because it's all in Uber. So we have kitchen sink for KDE, which uh, which is quite complicated because there was also a kitchen tool version before, which got dropped, at least in the subversion of KDE for two weeks ago, which got replaced by an open sync based kitchen sink. This is the same for multi sync, there was a version 4 which got replaced by open, uh, open sync based uh, uh, multi sync. And there's M sync tool, which is the command line interface, but it's actually it's quite tricky to use. Um, because it's a long parameter list and it's, 
more, it's more likely to be used for an out of the box solution. It's more useful for debugging and uh, do try to reduce uh, a problem. So we will switch to a quick demonstration. So yeah. So what we are going to do first? So just kitchen sink. We add a new group, like we saw on the slide. For example, what you're going to see, um, maybe it's a palm device. So I have a palm device with KDE. And here you see the object type handling. This will be in the future can detect those when we do the discover. We will see uh, which they are going to support it because there are some devices which doesn't even store memos or notes. So we do a quick one, just in context. Now you have to choose by hand. Maybe we can improve the layer uh, for the plugins. So we take the KDE plugin and it takes the Palm plugin. So the KDE plugin at the moment don't need any configuration. It just uh, syncs the standard resource. And, and this is also uh, <coughs> quite tricky. Uh, um, this is uh, the Palm configuration. I just changed from USB to Bluetooth. The pilot being supports for two weeks now. Uh, hot sync while to set. It's quite cool. So, lots of beating edge features today. Um, so I turn on the palm device. You can see no wine. So now I press sync and press yes sync. So there was one entry. Oh, it's still solving. Go go go. Now we can in meantime start. Can you address book? No, there are empty entries. Okay. Oh, there are really empty entries. There are two uh, unnamed entries on the top of <laughs> So maybe we should delete them. You know, and this is why you, why you need to do revision history. Uh, no, because but after, after half a year of using this, uh, you find out that you have half of your applicate again. Oh, empty, empty, empty entries and you don't know Actually, why. it should never happen. So. Yes, but it does. Okay, so I just deleted the unnamed entries and press here synchronization and press here as well synchronization. So now they got deleted. This was quite quick. Maybe I should sync more data. So there you can see it's still not. They got not synced again. Say so still. And you, I don't know if anyone can see this. There's now only one entry. <laughs> okay. So maybe um, I can create a new entry, a new suggestion. So. Let me start out. What? Data start out. <laughs> data. Uh, we take data. <laughs> uh, maybe. A, So we have database. Um, Too many logs. 
So this is a, a more and like right? normal logs for end user. Like I deleted uh, those two. Uh, oh, oh, maybe, yeah, maybe, so yeah. This is this is this should be implemented on the on the front end side. So you mean some user friendly stuff? <laughs> ah, okay. I know about the logs. Oh, okay, so there there are, there are many logs behind this. So um, yeah um. Now we saw an, uh, maybe, if you want, it, it, you can create a new entry. I don't try to do that, but I... <laughs> There's the pen on the side. Well, okay, that helps. But <laughs> I don't look at it anyway, so... Okay, um, in the meantime, I... Um, uh, I, I trust it. Um, I can show the uh, new features of the capabilities. Uh, yeah, this is MSync tool, the command line interface. I, uh, we, uh, I uh, was not able to uh, to port the kitchen sink in time with the AD. It, it builds, but it doesn't link. So, so we do a merger. New entry? Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, well, I tried to like test, but doing the file. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is it going to take UTF-8, by the way? Oh, yeah, that's, that's working. Yeah, that doesn't, oh, this is not UTF, this is it's not P, it's Windows. Okay. Uh, but we can handle those. We, we, we do, uh, in the plugin we do um, uh, this, kind of, uh, this conversion. Oh, um, I just do this thing, then I have to go. If you want to see the demo on the merger, we can met at the booth. And uh, so last question. You just touched, uh, Really good uh, subject, the internationalization, UTF supported languages and stuff like this. And um, it's actually, um, if this works, it can on the block. If it, it does support us or it, it doesn't support us. So it, the framework it doesn't care about it. We don't use the UTF 8. And the buttons have to convert, when they convert to the XML format, or as well to UTF 8. Do you store the output uh, format? If the information originally is in code page one five two one, and we use storage in UTF. Yeah, we converted them back to the from UTF from the XML format, which is UTF eight, back to code page thousand one hundred whatever. So I do this last thing, and then I have to hand over to Timo. Oh, it's now doing installation of Bluetooth. Oh. So, um, <coughs> out of six, out of time, I, I have to go on because I got time off. So, so um, conclusion, backup, backups are recommended. Also, it's still not perfect, but it's quite cool. So, and we really need more developers. It's, we have 15 plugins. Some of them are unmaintained, or we don't even have devices for it to test or to validate if they even work. And um, you can find further information about the project or the Lipsync Bar project on those websites. Or if you have some specific question about OpenSync, put them on the mailing list, or you can also contact me directly. So there's no time for questions. <laughs> Sorry, but you can uh, meet me, meet me uh, on the booth. Um, yes, and there are some kind of workers.